Hi and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and today I want to start another playthrough session and today I'm going to start Wilderness, a game of survival. I know I promised to do some walkthrough or review videos of some other games but to be honest I've been doing so many previews and reviews recently that I really decided I want to do a playthrough video and very recently I received Wilderness here from a Moth Trade basically and I really was keen to give it a try. I have not played it yet so this will basically be a learning exercise for me so please bear with me and make me aware of any mistakes I'm pretty sure I will be doing but nevertheless I think this will be a great experience for me. The story so far. You have been assaulted, robbed and left to your fate with not enough clothes or equipment to manage. You are abandoned, far away from civilization and security, far from the life of welfare and comfort you had. There's not a human being for miles, unless of course the robbers have found some other unfortunate travelers. Now you have to survive the wilderness that spreads for miles and miles in all directions and maybe just maybe you can get back to civilization again. There's a vague hope to hold on to. You know there is a settlement somewhere east. So go east, east and further to the east. Get out of the wilderness. Alive. That's basically the starting setup of wilderness. For once I decided to go with a three player game. Of course I will play all the three players alone. But of course if you have any suggestions for one of the players really I invite you to give you some whatever recommendations. If you say let's let's I want to take over the red player here please send in your recommendations or your suggestions for any moves and I will try to make them alive. Of course this counts for all the other players here as well. The second thing is that I will play the game with only four of these landscape tiles here and this really makes the game a little bit faster. I think I will have to learn this game and as I'm playing alone I think the reduced version should suffice as well. You will also notice that I replaced those normal counters for the hunger, thirst and exhaustion track because really what the game comes with are these little cardboard chits and they're really crap. So I think I took some wooden cubes. I believe they are from Fresco for now. Of course I will put them back and maybe go with <laughs> let's say dedicated set of wooden cubes but for now I think I will have to remember to put that back into the fresco box and I think really with those wooden cubes keeping tr uh, track on things is definitely much easier than with those cardboard tokens. Of course the landscape tiles are being placed at random in total the game ships with eight of those and the normal game uh, would be played with six landscape types so you will have two landscape that are not part of the play in this case I only play with half of the landscape tiles but there's also let's say the major maximum version where you play with all eight of them but then you would have a relatively long game but I think the game itself can be relatively speedy. The first thing that we would do is we would reveal the first landscape tile and we normally do that just by flipping this around this edge here and all the players will start on this area here. Here we can see we have already a bear that's active and this is I think a good thing that we already have it and this bear will later on move during the I think it's the nature's turn. But first of all let's place all of our survivors on the starting space here and just give you an information about the scale. I think each of these areas is considered to be a 35 square kilometers piece of landscape and that's why you are not necessarily see each other. And right now we would start the game on a forest spot here. We will also immediately place the bear on its starting position and we would also give three of those event cards to all of the players. And for now I think I will only show you the cards for the white player that's here on the left hand side and when you can see those event cards they have two sections basically a top sections and a bottom section. 
And normally the top section is something that is in most cases beneficial for you. So with this no way ability here, for example, I would be allowed to cancel any event card. That card is discarded without any effect. So if someone is playing an event card against me, I could play this no way card and I think flying frog has this similar card uh, like that as well. I don't think so, but I think the idea is more or less the same. And the bottom section here is, is the cunning snake. You may move the snake three areas or you may move another animal one area. So this is normally a way to interfere with your opponent. So you can really hinder them in order to get close to the village. And that's basically the idea going from the starting position all the way over those four landscapes to the far east where you see this little village time on the bottom of the landscape tile. Let's have a look at the two other event cards for the white player. We have the Moonlight, which we can play during a night turn. You cannot get lost during this turn. This is definitely a good thing. And we have the Fatigue, again, something to hinder the other players. Play at the start of an opponent's turn before he checks his energy level. That player increases his exhaustion one step. He also receives minus one energy this turn. So this is really a very bad thing. And this would be a good candidate to play the Norway card as a some kind of a reaction. And last but not least we have the raft. The raft enables you to move on water areas for two energy per movement as if they were grassland. That's definitely a good thing. The raft is placed in front of you on the table just before you enter a water area and is discarded when you get back on land. This is definitely a good thing because there is one or there are some various um, water um, spaces on the board which you're normally not allowed to enter. And the downside or the, the bottom ability is exhaustion. Each opponent increases the exhaustion one step. Definitely not a good thing. Before we get started, let's have a look at all those tracks here. The most important one is the exhaustion track, because for once it shows you how much energy you have for a turn and movement and stuff like that normally costs you energy. So when you walk onto a grassland area, you would have to give away two energy in order to move there. Forest is a little bit more expensive. And as you get more and more exhausted, you start each round with less and less energy. If you ever come to this space here, you are basically dead and gone. And then the other players uh, might continue the game. And if you are the last one standing, then you immediately win the game. And I think this is something I will do. If the first of those players will ever die, I think I will call it then basically a day and will end my play. So I think it's really important to keep all of the players alive. The other tracks like Thirst and Hunger here are more or less adjusting your exhaustion track. So right now we are relatively good. So we have a zero and zero for hunger and thirst. And when we ever got to this space here, for example, then we would lose an additional exhaustion point by the end of our round. And this is definitely something that can get worse and worse. So when we get really thirsty and really hungry, we might lose eight additional exhaustion points each round. And when you do the math, you can see that eight points, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in a single round can really bring you down a lot. So it's really important to find something to eat and of course also something to drink. You can find food in a forest and a grassland area and as well in, as in a swamp area, but right now we don't have any swamp areas on the board. You can find something to drink next to any water tile. So for example, if you would ever come during your movement phase to this mountain area here, for example, then you would be adjacent to water and then you would be allowed to drink and then you would fill up your thirst level all the way to the left. So this is relatively easy. Of course, in this case, we have a bear nearby. So I think this can be a little bit um, dangerous in order to get something to drink because some of the other players can move this bear very actively. Okay, so I think we can get started. And the first thing that we have to do is to draw a weather card because the weather card will more or less keep track of the rounds. So each of those weather cards show six spaces and each of them 
represents four hours. So really going through one through this event car um, weather cards shows you a full day of 24 hours. And normally each of those weather cards give you some benefits or something also some penalties. In this case, we have the clear view. That's definitely a good thing. Each player draws one card and each time a player moves into a mountain area, that player draws one extra event card. And event cards are really important in this game. So first of all, let's give a card to the white player. And here we have the trail. Play at the start of your turn. Every move you make into a forest or mountain area only costs you two energy this turn. This is good because we have a lot of forests ahead of us. And the bad side of this card is a leg injury. Play at the start of an opponent's turn. That player must spend three extra energy on his first movement this turn. Pretty mean, I guess. And of course, I gave a fourth card to each of the other players as well. As we are all in good shape at the start of the game, we all start the game with six energy, which we can spend to either move or go get some food. Right now, really, I think moving is the most important piece. So I think this is what I will do or what the white player will do now. And I think the white player will directly play this trail cut here. Play at the start of your turn, which is now every move you make into a forest or mountain area only costs you two energy this turn. So normally it costs you three energy to move into a forest region, but with this trail we just discovered, we are allowed to move there with only two energy for each area. As we are still in the beginning of his turn, the other players could also play some cards, but I think for now they will not. So I think with his six movement points or six energy, he can now move basically two energy to move in here, two additional energy to move in there. Be remember, because of the trail, normally this was costing three energy. And I think he is feeling pretty brave and will move one space closer to this bear. He knows the other players might have a card at, on hand, which they could maybe move the bear up to two spaces closer to him. But for now, he's really feeling lucky. And of course, he might also consider moving into the mountain area here, because that was this would let him draw an event card because of the clear view we currently have. He could have rested, he could have slept, he could have searched for food, but I think for now this is okay for him. He's played his event card, so he really got some spaces ahead, and that's definitely a very important thing. Now we come to the red player. And Red will also play an event card and this says Delightful Forest. This turn moving into forest areas only costs you two energy. Awesome. Also, you reduce, reduce your exhaustion one step for every forest area you may enter. This is really a good thing. Of course, right now he is not that exhausted, but I think when he would also move two sp or three spaces, he would may basically be maxed out in respect on his exhaustion. That's definitely a good thing. So he will play this delightful forest now. And so he will move one, two, three spaces down there. Remember, these are around 35 square kilometers. So it's relatively unlikely that they will meet, meet by accident this point in time. I think this was already also the turn of the red player. But of course, we must not forget to max out his exhaustion completely. This is definitely a relatively good advantage for the red player. For now, the black player won't play any event cards here. Again, I'm just learning this game, so I don't know how aggressive you have to be, actually. He does have some cards on his hand, of course, that might help him, especially hinder the other players, but I think he does not have any terrific cards at hand at this point in time that would move him out. So I think he will spend three energy points to move into that forest area, and then he will spent two additional to move into the grassland here. He had one more left, but I think with this he cannot do anything at this point in time. So that's basically it. After all the players have taken their actions, it's the nature's turn. And the first step is 
all players increase their thirst and hunger one step. So this means they get a little bit thirstier and a little bit hungrier. After we've adjusted our thirst and hunger level, it's time to increase the exhaustion. But it's really important that you first adjust your thirst and hunger because this could really alter your amount of points you're losing in respect to the exhaustion. But now we will do the same for the exhaustion. So all players increase their exhaustion. And by default, you increase your exhaustion one level. And of course, you would add any modifiers from the thirst or hunger track. Right now these are both on zero, so black player only loses one level or increases his exhaustion by one. And of course the same applies for the red player and the black player. If there are any animals on the board we would now move them and of course we do have the bear nearby and normally an animal would stay where it is as long as there are players on the same area. If there are players on an adjacent area they would move to this player. If there would be more in reach then we would determine this randomly by either rolling a die or something like that. And in this case no players are really adjacent so we will use this nice compass style here but you could also roll the die accordingly so hopefully this works out okay. This was a okay I guess. So we would move him closer to that direction and this means he would move into this mountain area here. And this is definitely bad news because at least the white player was planning to go to this mountain area in order to enjoy the clear view and getting an additional event card. But I think for now this might not be a very good idea because then he would have to fight the animal. And then last but not least we will move the our track one step further on this weather card here and right now we are still in full daylight on these four ones and then we have two night spots where we do have some other or some adjustments to the core rule so you can get lost pretty easily i think you cannot search for any food and stuff like that and then it's again the white player's turn and before he does anything the black player will play a card against him and this says hopelessness. Play at the start of an opponent's turn that player loses three energy this turn. This would be really bad news because he would have to stay relatively close to the bear. But as the white player is lucky he plays his no way card. Play this card to cancel any event card. That card is discarded without any effect. Unfortunately the black player doesn't have an additional no way card then he would be able to cancel this event card. So in this case both of those cards are just being discarded. And this also means that the white player still has his full six energy points which is enough to move him out of the forest. So he'll move two energy points here, two energy points there. He still has two more left and now he would be allowed to flip over this additional landscape tile. So let's see what we have here. So we we'll do it this way. Wow, this is really a tough area. And we have another animal. We have a wolf's lair over here. So we will have really some movement in the upcoming nature's turns. That's definitely a good thing. The white player still has two energy points left, but the problem is he would need four to move here and three to move there. Of course he could move to the grassland here, but then he would be again adjacent to this bear. And I think he doesn't like that. So he will use his remaining two energy points to rest, which means he's allowed to reduce his exhaustion by one point. And then we come to the red player who's here. I think it's really tough to differentiate between those two, but this is the player, this is the bear. The first thing that the red player will do, he will play the wolf pack event card. And this says you may move each wolf two areas and you or you may move another animal one area. This is also pretty mean because he will move the bear back to his lair, which means he's now adjacent to the white player who can look forward to a nice bear attack at the next nature's turn. 
By spending full energy, he will move to this mountain space here. For once, he's now allowed to drink and this is basically a free action. Which means he will reduce his thirst to the maximum level here. Already a good thing. Additionally, he's still allowed to draw um, an event card because of the clear view here. So let's do that as well. And with his remaining two points, he will also rest. So again, his exhaustion is basically zero. Coming back to the black player again, he's not playing any cards that are in favor for him, at least not at this point in time. So he will spend two energy to move into this rocky area here. Two additional more additional to move down there. He could still move there, but again, here's the bear and he doesn't want to end up in a fight. So I think for now he will stay where he is and I think he will use his two remaining energy points to do some resting and this would reduce his exhaustion one point. Again, those were all the actions for our players. So we will increase our thirst. We have now a modifier of one. We will increase our hunger. And now we will have to increase our exhaustion again. So we'll have one point for the base exhaustion and one point coming from the thirst. So he would already lose a second point or increase his exhaustion a second point. It's basically the same for the red player, one and one, but he's lucky he only loses one level of exhaustion. So I think he's really kind of a leader here. So I think, or I'm pretty sure the other players will play some mean cards against this one pretty soon as well. And last but not least, we do that for the black player. Also, he gets a modifier, so he will also lose two points of or he will increase his exhaustions by two points. And now it's time to move the animals. And I think let's just get started with the nearby animals. So basically with this bear, the bear will move down to the area here and there he will attack the white player. Before he gets into the attack, the red player will play an additional card against the white player. And this says weak. Play during an animal attack against an opponent. He gets minus two on his die roll. This is really another mean card he just played. And the fight against animals is pretty simple. You would roll two dice for the animal. You are allowed to roll one die for yourself and then you compare the results and whoever has the higher amount wins this fight. And yeah, the lower one lose the fight and then you would lose the additional points in exhaustion. And he also loses two additional points because of the mean card that the red player played. So this would be a relatively tragic turn. Of course, there are cards in the game that help you to increase your fighting, for example. But right now, the white player doesn't have those. So let's roll the dice for the bear. Oh, he's so lucky. Come on, that's a three. And now we would roll one die for the white player. And that's a one, we would reduce two. Of course, this is then basically a zero in this case. And this means the difference between those are three. So the white player just lost one, two, three additional or increase his exhaustions by three points. And this also means he starts the next round with only five energy points. We still have the wolf here that needs to be moved. So let's roll the spinner here. No, that doesn't count. I guess that's better. Again, this is a five. So the wolf will move to this swarm area to the northwest. And last but not least, we will move the time track one space ahead and then we would start a new round. But I think I will end my playthrough for today. So before we move all the players into a new area here, I think I will stop it and hope you enjoyed it so far. <laughs> hope I didn't make too many mistakes up to now. Hope there weren't any, to be honest, as the rules are relatively straightforward, I guess. But again, keep me posted if you spotted any errors. And please also send me some of your recommendations, what you want to do. Again, I think I will show you the cards that the white player currently has. So maybe you have an idea on what to do with him during his next turn. 
I'm pretty sure he wants to move out of the area with the bear here. That's really important. And yeah, I think he might make it down there, for example, or something like that. But unfortunately, he doesn't have the right cards to move the bear some spaces ahead. But maybe you have an idea on what to do. Hope to see you soon in one of my next videos, maybe for the next episode of my playthrough of Wilderness. And until then, bye bye.